This is very special what you're about to hear. Who could have predicted that artificial intelligence would become the next big thing in tech, especially when the whole sector was getting slaughtered last year? NVIDIA, that's who. In the last few months, we've been enthralled by generative AI, uh, yeah, but these programs like uh, ChatGPT. But Wall Street quickly realized the key here is the technology that powers AI, much of which comes from Kramer, Fave, and NVIDIA. The reason why the stock's up 140% from its lows last October. Now, today's <laughs> NVIDIA's Renaissance man, CEO Jensen Wong, gave his annual keynote speech at the GPU Technology Conference, followed by a Q&A session with analysts. I think this should be required viewing because it always gives us great insights to the future. You must see it if you're going to own a tech stock. But don't take it from any stock at this point. Don't take it from me. Let's go straight to the source of Jensen Wong. He's the visionary founder and CEO of NVIDIA. More and more. Jensen, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim. Nice to see you. Well, this was some day. Uh, it's been some couple of years, frankly. But one thing that I think people will understand immediately is when you say that this is the iPhone moment for something. The iPhone moment for AI? Yeah, this is a big deal. You know, with the PC, with the Internet, then cloud, mobile cloud, iPhone created a new computing platform, a new computing model. The way you program it is different. The way you use it is different. And what it can do is completely different, something really quite incredible. And this is absolutely the case with generative AI. You program it with human language. You don't have to program it with C or Pascal or Fortran or C++ or Java. You just program it with human language, your favorite language. And it could be precise, it could be imprecise, and somehow through conversation, this computer figures out what it is that you want, and it does it for you. It can even write software for you. It can create art for you. It can write stories for you, poems for you, um, to dictate for you. It could, you know, condense a contract for you. And it could be deployed in so many different ways, as Microsoft and Google has just demonstrated. It's connected directly into the most popular applications in the world, Office and Google Docs. These are the most pervasive Office automation productivity applications in the world. And now it's going to enhance those. And so this is a, a brand new computing platform, a new computing model. And that's the reason why I call it the iPhone mo moment of AI. But the confusing thing for me, or unless I was working with Steve Jobs for many, many months before, is that this is something you showed me repeatedly and showed our viewers repeatedly. But it took this chat GPT to get everyone just, it, it, it turned the world upside down. What, what, what happened? You've been telling me, you showed me this stuff. I showed it, it just didn't resonate until ChatGPT? ChatGPT, the AI heard around the world. Hey, listen, you know, the, the team at OpenAI just did an amazing job. First of all, they realized that by scaling up these large language models, both in the number of parameters and effectively divert the computer science version of neurons and the amount of data that the neural network learned from or essentially the metaphor of human experience. Um, the more experience you give it, the bigger brain you have, uh, the more capability this AI model can achieve. And the thing that was really groundbreaking is at some point uh, it was able to uh, perform tasks that you didn't have to explicitly teach it. And now this chat GPT with, a, with all of the technology they put in place to um, uh, put guardrails on it, to uh, make it make it so that so that you can you can uh, teach it how to perform instructions, um, uh, uh, enhance it, augment it, and and align it so that so that it's uh, uh, not biased and 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 uh, and ideally and, and as much as possible not harmful. I mean, all of the things that they've done to take what it was GPT to into a Chat GPT model that was groundbreaking stuff that they did, right. and as a result, right. what happened was this. AI, this application became the easiest application in the world to use. No application in history has ever been so easy to use and so effective when you tell it to do something. And that's really the, the reason why it was the fastest growing application in the world. In just a couple of months, over 100 million people used it. Um, it, it just kind of tells you uh, what a groundbreaking application this was. Do you think the world's ready for this, Jensen? Do you think the world really is ready for this? Well, the world is, is uh, absolutely ready for this because we, we want more, more productivity. We want to do more with less. There are some major problems that we would like to be able to attack without, that without the help of AI, we can't really get to it. For example, uh, we announced at GTC this platform called BioNemo. And it's an end-to-end -end system that, that includes uh, imaging systems, uh, 
everything from uh, accelerating cryo EM, mass spec, um, X-ray crystallography, uh, gene sequencing, um, all of those instruments are bringing just a massive amount of data into of healthcare into computers. The second thing that we do is we now use that data to teach AI the language of biology, the language of of how the language of proteins, the language of of uh, molecules, so that we can make predictions of what kind of proteins uh, would have the the uh, similar functionality as helpful proteins or chemicals that have similar properties as helpful chemicals. Uh, and we could do, we can also um, uh, do virtual screening right inside the computer. None of this would be possible without the giant breakthrough of large language models. The same language model that learned the human language is now the same language model we're using to learn the language of biology and the language of chemistry. And so these kind of breakthroughs accelerate uh, work that none of us could possibly imagine doing just a few years ago. And now the healthcare industry, the drug discovery industry is just buzzing with enthusiasm over this new capability. And we announced a, a system, a, a large language model creation uh, system called BioNemo. Well, and so this is just one example of the many, many examples of things that we were able to do now without, uh, that, that wasn't possible. The many AI. verticals you outlined today, whether, whether it be, you know, everything from copywriting to uh, an advertising to industrial to sustainability, saving a lot, a lot less power, which I know you care tremendously, makes me feel that one day we could say, OK, we could talk to this and say, please solve kidney cancer for us. We want to know how prostate cancer can be stopped. Or at the same time, we want to put a man or a woman, man or woman on, the, on Mars and we want to do it in two days. How do we do it? I mean, what's to keep this thing from ever being? It's just smarter than we are. Well, I don't know that it's smarter than we are. At the moment, it's, it's nowhere near as smart as we are. Um, but whatever we teach it and it's able to, to perform, it can perform a lot faster than we can. You know, this is no different than, than when uh, we had access to search for the very first time. It was just incredible to have the world's information literally there, right there in that one browser, and you could prompt, uh, prompt it to, to find your information from anywhere. It was like instantaneously the world's libraries were turn, you know, turned inside out, and all of the information that we wanted to get access to, we have at our fingertips. Now, at that capability, enhanced human capability. It, it made us all smarter. It made it possible for us to gain access to information quicker and, uh, and lower the bar uh, for access of information. Now, the thing that's, that's happening now with large language models and ChatGPT is the first to demonstrate it. We lowered the bar for programming computers. This is a field that was only available, really, really accessible to a small group of computer scientists in the world, programmers in the world, and now we've democratized it. We, we've narrowed this technology gap tremendously, this, this technology divide where some people know how to use the tools, um, benefit from it, versus other people who don't understand how to use the tool can't benefit from it. And so the very first time, we've, we've completely closed that gap and democratized computing. This, this ability for AI to in one vertical, and I just, this is kind of a gen general vertical. Right. Um, of course, you're going to use this for uh, education. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, our own AI teacher to teach us matters and uh, things that we would like to do, you know, learn calculus, learn differential equations, learn fluid dynamics, learn what, quantum chemistry, learn the things that you would love to learn. Uh, but quite frankly, it's just too inaccessible to you today. And now here's an AI that could teach you the information. They, in the future, not only will you get the words, uh, you'll get the words, you'll, they'll describe the equations, they'll illustrate it for you, generate images and videos for you, uh, maybe even generate for you a 3D graphic simulation so that you can interact with it and learn even more deeply. Well, so uh, all of these kind of capabilities are finally here. Well, I just want to congratulate you and everyone should go watch the keynote, but I found, I, I, I found a lot of times uh, that it was bigger than what I could understand, so I watched it a second time, and I'm going to watch it a third time tonight. Because it is just not of this world. And I got to tell you, sometimes, as you know, I call you Da Vinci. You're not of this world. I just got to congratulate you and your team for a great job. Jensen Wong, founder, president, and CEO of NVIDIA. Great to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Absolutely. Yeah, money's back in. Coming up, stores are closing after a holiday slide. Can a bankable CEO 
put her foot down. Find out next.